to injury. But the previous administration lifted these sanctions just before what would have been the total collapse of the Iranian regime. Wow, that's what you think? I hate to break it to you, Mr. Trump, but I've been living in Iran for about three years now, and the sanctions have had a minimal effect. Iranians are busy building the economy of the country. Engineers and doctors alike are pretty much content. Occasionally, while sipping tea, an Iranian shopkeeper will look up at the news where you're saying your usual drivel and say, Hey, Bobo, che chare badekhloche. Shaking his head and going back to tending his inventory. Nobody's phased by you, Mr. Trump. The leader of Iran had already predicted that America would go back on its deal. Before you even became president in November 2016, Ayatollah Khamenei said, America is our enemy because of some clear reasons. As I said, by enemy, we mean American politicians and policies. They broke their promises on the issue of the JCPOA and they threatened to impose more sanctions on us. The US presidential elections will take place in a few months. The current American administration will completely change and there will be no guarantee that the future administration will honor the few promises that the current administration has made. And once again, you've proved him right. The United States is far from the only target of the Iranian dictatorship's long campaign of bloodshed. Iranian dictatorship? Holding office from 1951, Iranian Prime Minister Mohammad Mossadegh was an Iranian politician democratically elected by the people of Iran. He began the nationalization of the Anglo-Iranian oil company established by the British to share Iran's profits. And by share, it means 85% was going to the British, while only 15% was left for the Iranian people. So Mossadegh tried to nationalize the oil industry so that Iran would be in control of its own finances. How audacious. In 1953, his government was overthrown in a coup d'etat aided by the United States Central Intelligence Agency and the United Kingdom's Secret Intelligence Service. I guess the West only likes democracy when it's under their control. The regime violently suppresses its own citizens. You should travel more, Mr. Trump. I mean, the truth is that following the American-British orchestrated coup, the United States gave $68 million in emergency aid and an additional $1.2 billion over the next decade in order to strengthen the brutal dictatorial regime of the Shah, whom the West had replaced Iran's democracy with. Back then, US and Iran were the best of friends because Iran was being a good little puppet. Iran, by obeying the whims and fancies of America, was suppressing its own people. There were those who refused to bow to America's whims, and so they rose up and overthrew the brutal dictatorship of the Shah and brought the Islamic Revolution of 1979, which we have today. And guess what? We're here to stay. This regime has fueled sectarian violence in Iraq. Surely you remember that America supplied dictator Saddam Hussein of the Ba'athist Iraq with several billion dollars worth of economic aid. The sale of dual-use technology, non-US origin weaponry, military intelligence and special operations training. And you're saying that Iran is the one which is fueling sectarian violence in Iraq? Who created Daesh, Iran or America? But Alhamdulillah, by the grace of God, Iran and Iraq, Sunni, Shias, Muslims in general, got together to destroy the monstrosity of Daesh, which you unleashed upon the world. And vicious civil wars in Yemen. I think you're getting confused. I get it, too many you know, Middle Eastern countries in the mix, even though you're reading off a teleprompter. But let me just help you out there anyway. Your best friend and ally, Saudi Arabia, with the help and support of America, has, according to the UN, massacred over 10 thousand civilians, men, women and children in Yemen, and has been bombing Yemen for the past two years. Not Iran. In Syria, the Iranian regime has supported the atrocities of Bashar al-Assad's regime and condoned Assad's use of chemical weapons against helpless civilians. You guys did a pretty good job at trying to disguise the true affairs that went on in Syria. And you did your best to paint Assad as the bad guy through not only the mainstream media, but alternative media too. But has it really been about Assad being the bad guy? The fact of the matter is Assad's government is anti-Israel, something that America just can't bear. Syria is part of the axis of resistance against America, Israel, and your proxy is like Daesh. That's the real problem that America has against Assad and Syria. It's got nothing to do with them being bad guys. Regardless of the absolute lies which are perpetrated by the mainstream and alternative media organizations, 
The truth is that Assad is part of the resistance which has helped to destroy Daesh. Imam Khamenei, the leader of the Axis of Resistance, has said America is angry at the defeat of the American-sponsored, funded, supported, politically backed ISIS terrorists in Syria. You just hate the idea of any kind of resistance against you. But rest assured, whatever you bring next, the Muslims will defeat that too. There are also many people who believe that Iran is dealing with North Korea. Yeah, many people also believe that you make a good president. Many people also believe that the destruction of the ozone layer doesn't exist. What the hell does that mean? Many people believe. And even if it's true, North Korea never harmed me. North Korea never harmed or bombed Iran. Why should they not have every right to have dealings with them? Because America doesn't like them. The regime's two favorite chants are death to America and death to Israel. Yeah, you're damn right it is. And you forgot that Britain and the Saudi regime are also on that list. The leader Ayatollah Khamenei himself has made it very clear that the death to America slogan is rational and has strong support. It is clear that it does not mean death to the American nation. This slogan means death to American policies, death to arrogance. In other words, death to you, Mr. Trump, death to the White House's foreign policies, and death to the arrogance for which America preys on the wealth and sovereignty of other nations like a greedy, fat, Pig. Death to the blood-sucking system of capitalism which continues to make the poor poorer and the rich richer. Death to the so-called democracy which translates to nothing but submitting to the Western powers. Fight the power, death to your proxy groups such as the Taliban and Daesh. You will see American citizens themselves burning American flags because they've recognized what America is. You can attack, invade, pillage and plunder any land you so desire and if someone turns around and says death to you, Suddenly they're the bad guy? <laughs> I don't think so. The most chanted slogan in the world by free-spirited freedom seekers is death to America. The Revolutionary Guard is the Iranian supreme leader's corrupt personal terror force and militia plotting to bomb a popular restaurant right here in Washington, D.C. What are you talking about? I know you might not believe this, but Iran has its own fast food restaurant corporations and restaurants. It doesn't need to bomb yours. It's not desperately trying to make people afraid of Iran. No, they're gonna bomb our burgers. Like, what, what are you talking about? People of America and the rest of the world are well aware of the fear tactics used by the American system. I am announcing a new strategy to address the full range of Iran's destructive actions. First, we will work with our allies to counter the regime's destabilizing activity. Second, we will place additional sanctions on the regime to block their financing of terror. Third, we will address the regime's proliferation of missiles and weapons that threaten its neighbors' global trade and freedom of navigation. And finally, we will deny the regime all paths to a nuclear weapon. See, now I'm struggling to think of a country other than the United States of America which has ever used atomic or nuclear weaponry against another nation. When the USA bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki within the first two or four months following the bombings, the acute effects of the atomic bombings had killed 90,000 to 146,000 people in Hiroshima and 39,000 to 80,000 in Nagasaki. You see, in reality, America is the one that needs to be stopped. You, Mr. Trump, are the real axis of evil. And as much as you might go on about how North Korea or Vietnam or Iraq or Iran or Afghanistan, however many countries you have accused in the past of being the bad guy, the truth is that you, Mr. Trump, and America are the true threat to peace, freedom, democracy, and justice everywhere on earth. But in the end, despite all the allegations that you want to make against Iran, and regardless of all your plots and schemes, and your very best efforts, the fact of the matter remains that, as the leader of the Islamic Revolution says himself, America can't do a damn thing.